In this video, we'll be talking about assets and bases in the industry. So what are assets and bases used for in the industry? Well, assets are used in the chemical industry, mostly as reagents and catalysts. They're also used in the food industry for artificial flavoring and carbonic acids. And pharmaceutical industry in painkillers like aspirin. So acids in the chemical industry. Well, what do we use it for? What's an example? Concentrated sulfuric acid is something that we use as a dehydrating agent for organic compound synthesis. And sulfuric acid can also be used as a catalyst for the production of esters, or it could be used for the use of making phosphoric acid and thus making phosphate fertilizers. Acids in the food industry include things like citric acid, and citric acid is a triprotic weak acid that's found in citrus, uh, citrus fruits, but uh, it's something that can also be synthesized. And often we use titration with uh, acids in order to determine the nutritional values of foods. Another one is carbonic acid, which we commonly find as the fizzy component of our drinks. And when a can is left op open, because of the equilibrium that exists for carbonic acid and the decomposition into H2O and CO2, Often the carbon dioxide will leave an open system when we, once we open the can, and that's going to make the drink go flat. So that's the example of the equilibrium that demonstrates the decomposition of carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is forming carbon dioxide and water, and the carbon dioxide is leaving the system, which is why our fizzy drinks go flat. Acetic acid, also known as ethanolic acid, is used for the preservation of food as the acid kills bacteria. And we, all, and we very often know acetic acid as being vinegar, white vinegar. In the pharmaceutical industry, we'll use it for aspirin. So aspirin is, an, uh, is used to reduce the inflammation by inhibiting biological enzymes. Here's our IUPAC name, is acetyl salicylic acid. And titration techniques we often use to ensure the quality control of producing drugs. So similar to checking the quality control on food. What are the uses for bases? Well, typically we use strong bases like sodium hydroxide to hydrolyze fats for the production of glycerol and crude soap, and we call that saponification. Uh, we also use uh, bases, so bases exist in oven and drain cleaners. And also sodium hydrogen carbonate, which we know as baking powder, is responsible for the rising effect of baking goods. Water softener is also a base, so bases such as sodium carbonate can remove hardness out of water. So uh, hard water is water which contains uh, calcium ions or also magnesium ions. Ammonia is another common component of uh, fertilizer formulations and that produces lots of nitrogen for plant growth. It is a very important nutrition for plants. Toothpaste, they're also basic substances and they're designed to neutralize the acidic food acid which causes tooth decay. So actually food in your teeth uh, causes your tooth to rot because when the food itself rots, it creates acid. Medications like antacid tablets, so antacid stands for antiacid, so obviously it's antiacid is a base. So antacid tablets contain base and they aim to neutralize excessive stomach acid which might lead to something like gastric uh, reflux. How about acid-base analysis used by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people? Well, the neutralization of ant stings and blue bottle jellyfish stings, we use, they use that with uh, alkali plant saps. Uh, they also neutralize stingray and stonefish stings using leaves of goat's foot. Sometimes they might ingest slightly alkaline clay soils, and the reason for that is because that helps to neutralize the stomach acid so they can uh, eat the food um, and potentially be okay with that. Another one is using the acidity of native fruits to determine the ripeness. So I guess if it's more sour, which is characterized by the acidity of the fruit, well, then it's going to be rawer, and if it's sweeter, then it will be more ripe. How about acid-based analysis using digital probes and instruments? Well, one of the methods is using automatic titrators. Uh, what are they? They are microprocessor-controlled titration equipments that help to detect endpoints based on the data. We have another one which is a Carl Fisher titration and it uses a coulometric or volumetric titration to determine trace amounts of water in a sample. And the last one is potentiometric 
uh, titration, which is a technique that's similar to titration of a redox reaction to characterize some acids. Here's a list of acids in commercial and common household products. So as we talked about earlier, vinegar contains acetic acid, aspirin contains acetyl salicylic acid, vitamin C is absorbic acid. We have wine, and uh, wine contains tartaric acid, malic acid, and citric acid. As we know, wine does come from grapes, and uh, we know that, that there is going to be acid in fruit, so we expect there to be citrus fruit, uh, citric acid, sorry. So we expect there to be citric acid. Some of the minor acids include acetic acid, butyric acid, lactic acid, ascorbic acid, and succinic acid. Lemon or orange juice will contain citrus acid, uh, citric acid, and we know that because lemon and orange are both citrus fruits, and the citrus fruits are characterized by having citric acid and having a sour flavor to them. And soft drink, as we talked about previously, has a carbonic has carbonic acid in it, and the carbonic acid decomposition reaction in equilibrium is what causes the soft drink to go flat. These are bases in common and uh, commercial household products. Oven cleaner contains sodium hydroxide, fertilizers contain ammonia, baking powder contains sodium carbonate, and toothpaste contains a range including aluminium hydroxide and calcium hydrogen phosphates, uh, which are aphiprotic, and calcium carbonate. 